The year is 1792. You and 23 New York City stockbrokers just signed the Buttonwood Agreement. In a few short years, this group of brokers would be known as the New York Stock Exchange, one of the greatest and most influential pillars in the global economy. In this historical stock trading game of strategy and wit, players must carefully plan their strategy phase by phase, trying to cash in big in a constantly changing market. And the stock market can be quite volatile. So there are a couple things you need to look out for. First, the market forces cards. These cards produce a random effect on the stock market every single round. Next is the lobbyist. Lobbyists are powerful, but only tend to hang around the wealthy. Each round, the player with the most cash gets to control the lobbyist, giving that player a second set of votes during phase three. And finally, the market bubble, which can quickly flip the value of a stock. Popping the bubble is your best chance to cash in big, make a run on a cheap stock, or screw over the person sitting next to you. But be careful, play your cards wrong, and you could find yourself drowning in a pool of your own liquidated assets. But playing the stock market is only half the battle. The only thing harder to predict in the stock market might just be the player sitting at the table with you. The one who can best match wits with their opponents will reign victorious in this fast-paced battle of social elite. Okay, let's play exchange. Start by dealing everyone a ledger board, as well as the cards and sleeve for each of the three phases. Then place the market value board in the middle of the table, each stock starting at $50 per share. Finally, deal each player a character card. This card lets you know what resources you're starting the game with. Mark it on your ledger board, collect your cash, and you're good to go. The game plays in five rounds. Each round is made up of three phases. Phase one, the stock selection phase. Each player is going to decide which stock they want to trade this round. Once everyone's made their decision, all players reveal simultaneously. Phase two, the buy sell phase. In this phase, every player must decide whether they want to buy or sell that stock, as well as how many. Choose carefully. You cannot change this number later, and the price of the stock is still going to change. Once every player has made the decision, flip over the cards simultaneously. Phase three, the market influence phase. Now every player gets to influence the market by raising or lowering the price of a stock by one. Choose wisely, taking into consideration what everyone else might be thinking. Again, once every player has made the decision, everyone reveals simultaneously. Finally, flip over the top market forces card and adjust the market accordingly. Players now reveal how many stocks they decided to buy or sell from phase two and complete the transaction with the treasury based on the new stock price. When that is finished, move the round counter and do it again. At the end of five rounds, players add up their value in stocks along with their cash. The player with the highest net worth wins the game. Hi, my name is Eric Sillis and thanks for checking out Exchange. I grew up playing board games all the time. I have really fond memories of evenings huddled over the table with my dad and my siblings. And to me, there's just something special, especially in today's day and age, about a group of people sitting around a table, connecting, laughing, and engaging with one another over a board game. And I also love that board games can transport you to another time or world, and they also get your competitive juices flowing. But in all my gaming, I found a surprising lack of games that are simple to learn and teach new people, and that don't take an hour or more to play, but still have enough strategy and intrigue to keep me interested and wanting to play again and again. So I designed Exchange to meet that need. It's a fantastic gateway game for new gamers, but still has a high level of replayability for more serious gamers. And the mechanism is pretty simple and fairly repetitive, but the decisions certainly aren't. And no two games ever play the same. You have to adapt your strategy based on how the market is behaving in that game and the people sitting at the table with you. I've played this game countless times. I mean, seriously, I've actually lost count. And I still find it just as enjoyable as I did in the beginning. And I've yet to find someone who didn't want to play again after their first game. Both creating a game and launching on Kickstarter have been dreams of mine. And I appreciate you considering backing this game and helping turn my dream into a reality.